Good morning students. How are you all today? Well, today's class we will learn about the modern dance in USA. Modern dance in America during the turn of the 20th century emerged when a many choreographers and dancers revolted against the two forms of dance that were prevailing at that time. What were these? One was the ballet and the other one was the vaudeville. They rejected what they interpreted as the inflexible and imperialistic nature of ballet and they wanted to be taken seriously as artists rather than be seen simply as entertainers. The persons who came up for these were Louis Fuller, Isadora Duncan, Ruth St. Denis and Ted Sean and they are considered to be the pioneers of modern dance in America. Louis Fuller was born in 1862. Developed, she developed an outline of ordinary movement and creative techniques that were used in combination with her innovative lighting equipment and transparent silk costumes. In 1891, Louis Fuller began experimenting with the property of gas lighting on silk costumes in Europe. Fuller was a creator and stagecraft trendsetter who held many patents for stage lighting including the first chemical mixes of gels and slides and the first use of luminescent salts to create lighting effects. Most of the movement was performed with the arms. As Fuller had almost no dance training, her works stressed on visual effects rather than storytelling or expressing emotions. Well, Fuller was well respected in the French scientific community where she was a close personal friend of Madame Curie or Marie Curie and a member of the French Astronomical Society. Fuller was the first American dancer and introduced Isadora Duncan to the audiences in France. Considered the founding mother of American modern dance, Isadora Duncan was born in 1877. She started her performance as skirt dancer and learned del sarte techniques in 1890s. By 1900, she was in Europe where she spent most of her remaining life and won the greatest acceptance. Duncan was actually groundbreaking. She rejected the corset, slippers and tutu of conventional ballet dress, taking on instead tunics that liberated the body and exposed its movement. She used music by Chopin. Beethoven, Gluck, Wagner and other first-rank composers. She danced on concert stages and in opera houses. She spoke of her dancing not as mere entertainment but as an art with a purpose of honour. Most of all, she insisted upon the essence of dance as movement. Her expressions were simple but performed with a musicality dynamic subtlety and charm that made it impressively significant. In 1904, Duncan established her first school of dance near Berlin, where she began to develop her theories of dance education and to assemble her famous dance group, which was later known as the Isadore Bells. Between 1904 and 1907, Duncan lived and worked in Greece, Germany, Russia and Scandinavia. Ruth St. Denis was raised in a bohemian environment and was encouraged to perform from a young age. She studied ballroom and skirt dancing and was exposed to del certe poses by her mother. Important early influences were her work with the eminent director David Belasco. Eastern spiritualism and imagery. Along with European travel, she called her dances translations. 
which were inspired by Eastern cultures and mythologies, including those from India and Egypt. In 1906, with Radha, St. Denis had found the essence of a distinctive dance style which com combined spiral form with equal parts, voluptuousness, mysticism and erotica. She built a stunning career as a soloist and in 1914 acquired a professional and personal partner in Ted Sean. A year later, the two opened Denis Sean, which as a school and company nurtured leaders of the next generation of modern dancers, including Martha Graham, Doris Humphrey and Charles Widman. St. Denis was responsible for most of the creative work and Sean was responsible for teaching technique and composition. In 1933, Sean founded his all-male dance group, Ted Sean and his men dancers, which was based at Jacob's Pillow Farm in Massachusetts. In 1939, St. Denis published her autobiography, An Unfinished Life. During the 1920s, a zeal for interpretative dancing swept America. Isadora Duncan's fame and Denishan's tours had introduced audiences and dancers alike to the concept of a new form of serious theatrical dancing. The groundwork had been laid for the first generation of modern dancers who began developing the art as we know it today. This first generation included Martha Graham, Mary Wigman, Hania Holm, Doris Humphrey, Charles Widman, Agnes de Mille and Lester Horton. In 1916, Martha Graham began studying at Denishon. During the next seven years, Graham developed from a student to a teacher to one of Denishon's best known performers. She often worked as Ted Sean's partner and became the co-star of Zostil, his famous duet about an Indian girl and an Aztec emperor. In the late 1920s, Graham began working closely with Louis Horst, who she had known when he was the musical director of Denishon. Horst introduced Graham to the work of Mary Wigman, the German modern dancer who studied with Jacques Dalcroze and then with Rudolf von Laban. The style of dancing Wigman evolved was, in her words, mostly dark, heavy and earthbound. Her style was introduced to the United States. In 1930, by her student Hania Holm. By 1930, Martha Graham developed a new structure of movements, which she called contraction and release. This was based on her own analysis of the Delsartian law of tension and relaxation. This system of muscle control gave Graham's dances and dancers a firm, angular look that contrasted with the soft, expressive bodily motions of Isadora Duncan and Ruth St. Denis. Mary Wigman was the most looked after modern dancer and choreographer in Europe and one of the chief proponents of modern dance during the 1920s and 30s. Wigman's choreography often employed non-Western instrumentation such as bells, gongs and drums from Asia and Africa. However, the primary musical accompaniment for her most well-known dances was percussion, which contrasted greatly with her use of silence. Wigman also utilized elated spiraling in her choreography. She was concerned with basic human emotions, relationships and superstitions. Wigman's costumes were simple, made with dark, rough fabrics influenced by non-Western and tribal motifs. She frequently included masks. One of the renowned personalities of American modern dance in the 1930s, Hania Holm, was born in Germany and studied at the Dalcroz Institute. She studied in the 1920s with Mary Wigman in Dresden, eventually becoming a member of her company and chief instructor at her school. In 1931, Holmes settled in New York to direct the Wigman Institute founded at the request of Saul Hurok 
in 1936 in response to rising anti-fascist sentiment. It was renamed the Hania Home School of Dance. She choreographed successfully on Broadway with dances for Kiss Me, Kate, My Fair Lady and Camelot. Holmes teaching accentuated space and in choreographing, she made regular use of improvisation. Her theatre work achieved a rare degree of dramatic and choreographic fusion. Doris Humphrey was a choreographic master, theoretician and creator of the technique known as fall and recovery. She studied at Denison School in Los Angeles where her teaching and creative abilities were rapidly accepted. In 1928, she left Danishon and gave her first independent concert with Charles Widman, with whom she formed the Humphrey Widman Studio and Company in New York. From the beginning, her work established an interest in the large-scale abstract works. Her book, The Art of Making Dances, was based on her theories about dance composition. Charles Widman was inspired by Roots and Dennis to become a dancer after seeing Roots' performance. In 1920, he received a scholarship to spend a summer studying at the Denishon School in Los Angeles. Widman was employed as a dancer for the Denishon Company. Widman brought a very masculine approach to dance that drew other men to the art form. His own form of dance, kinetic pantomime, had abstract movements that added extraordinary appeal to his dances. With Doris Humphrey, he founded the Humphrey Widman Studio and Company in New York in 1928. When she retired from performing in 1945, he established the Charles Widman Theatre Dance Company. Well, we will now talk about the second generation of modern dance. You know, by the end of Second World War, the original founders of modern dance had produced a crop of talented students who set out to create their own kind of dance. The great battle for the position and respectability of modern dance had already been fought and won. It was not necessary for the second generation to take themselves or their art with the same deadly seriousness that had characterized their predecessors. So we find that the second generation of uh, modern dance, uh, well those included uh, such artists as Eric Hawkins, Merce Cunningham, Paul, Paul Taylor, Jose Lehman, Catherine Dunham, Pearl Primus, Alvin Ali, Anna Halp Halprin, Yuv Rayner and Twyla Tharp. Eric Hawkins was a modern dance choreographer with an independent approach to movement based on natural kinesthetic. Based on natural kinesthetic response. After receiving his BA in classics from Harvard University, he enrolled at the School of American Ballet where he studied until 1938. At the same time, he danced in George Balanchine's American Ballet and Lincoln Kirstein's Ballet Caravan, for which he choreographed his first work, Showpiece, in 1937. In 1938, he joined the great Martha Graham's company, becoming its first male member and the choreographer's partner in numerous works, including Appalachian Spring in 1944 and in his modern dance choreography of 1940s, Hawkins first drew on Native American motifs. This intensified over the years as did his interest in Taoist theory and Asian forms. He celebrated natural phenomenon, made frequent use of masks and developed a free floating technique that gave his dancing its characteristic lightness, arid fluidity. Mars Cunningham has been a principal strength in modern dance since the 1960s. Trained at the Cornish School 
Mills College and the School of American Ballet, he danced with Martha Graham Company from 1939 to 1945, participating in lead roles in a number of works including Appalachian Spring. He began to present his own choreography in the 1940s and in 1953 founded the Merce Cunningham Dance Company. Those first concerts initiated collaboration with the composer John Cage that lasted for five decades. Under Cage's tutelage, Cunningham rejected psychological and dramatic contents from his work. He experimented with chance procedures, closely worked with avant-garde artists such as Robert Rauschenberg and Jasper Jones. He also developed a collaborative approach that insisted upon the autonomy of music, design and dance. Cunningham's controversial choreographic method and technique which emphasized balletic leg action and flexibility of the back and the torso influenced generations of dancers and choreographers beginning with the Judson group. Modern dance choreographer Paul Taylor trained at the Juilliard School during the 1950s and performed in works by Doris Humphrey, Charles Widman, Merce Cunningham, Martha Graham and George Balanchine. He was a soloist with Graham's company from 1955 to 1962. Even he as he continued to choreograph and present works with his own company which he founded in 1954. Jose Lehman was a crucial figure in the development of modern dance. His powerful dancing shifted perceptions of the male dancer while his choreography continues to bring a dramatic vision of dance to audiences worldwide. Lehman moved to New York City in 1928 and it was here that he saw the first dance program. What I saw simply and irrevocably changed my life. I saw the dance as a vision of ineffable power. A man could with dignity and towering majesty dance dance as Michelangelo's visions dance and as music of Bach dance. In 1946, after studying the, and performing for 10 years with Doris Humphrey and Charles Widman, he established his own company with Humphrey as artistic director. Lehman's choreographic works were quickly recognized as masterpieces and the company itself became a landmark of American dance. Many of his dances are considered classics of modern dance. In 1997, he was induced into the National Museum of Dance's Hall of Fame in New York. His autobiographical writing and unfinished memoir were edited by Lynn Garofola and published in 1999. The great personality of African American dance, Catherine Dunham studied anthropology at the University of Chicago. In 1935 to 36, with support from Rosewald Foundation, she spent 18 months investigating the dance cultures of the Caribbean. This research became the basis for African American style she was then developing. Settling in New York, she appeared at the 92nd Straight White and with her company, took part in 1940 Broadway hit Cabin in the Sky, choreographed by George Balanchine. In the 1940s, her preferred format was the spectacular, which introduced audiences around the country to the best of African American dance talent. Her technique, which drew on movements from the Pacific as well as Africa and the Caribbean, led toward an experience of total rhythmic immersion. In 1966, she began a long association with Southern Illinois University. Pearl Primus, dancer, choreographer and outspoken advocate for American dance, received a scholarship from the New Dance Group and in 1943 made her debut at the 92nd Street Y. She studied African and African American material and developed a repertory of dances emphasizing the rich variety of African diasporic traditions. 
In 1948, she received a grant to collect material and document dances in Africa that in some cases were fading into history. Back in New York, she opened the Pearl Primer School of Primal Dance. In 1961, she became the director of the African Performing Arts Center in Monrovia, Liberia, the first organization of its kind in Africa. A buoyant and charismatic performer, Primus lectured widely and taught courses in anthropology and ethnic dance on many campuses. She once said, I dance not to entertain but to help people to better understand each other. Alvin Ailey began his dance training as a teenager with Lester Horton in Los Angeles. He danced in Broadway and made appearances with Sophie Maslow, Anna Sokolow and Donald Mackley. He founded Alvin Ailey American Dance Theatre in 1958 as a repertory ensemble for modern dance classes and new works by Ailey and others. In 1960, he choreographed Revelations, a beloved modern dance classic. Cry in 1971, the solo dedicated to black women everywhere that made Judith Jamison a star was set to gospel music. In the 1970s, Alvin Ailey choreographed several works to music by Duke Ellington, a favorite composer. Ailey's best works drew on African American traditions and subject matter and hence is one of the country's outstanding companies as well as a showcase for African-American talent. Anna Halprim was a pioneering dancer and choreographer of the modern dance movement. She founded the San Francisco Dancers Workshop in 1955 as a center for movement training, artistic experimentation and public participatory events open to the local community. Halprim has created 150 full-length dance theater works and is the recipient of numerous awards including the 1997 Samuel H. Scripps Award for Lifetime Achievement in Modern Dance from the American Dance Festival. Her students include Trisha Brown, Yoon Rayner and many others. Yoon Rayner began training as a modern dancer in New York in 1957 and began to choreograph her own work in 1960. She was one of the founders of the Judson Dance Theatre in 1962, the genesis of a movement that proved to be a vital force in modern dance in the following decades. Rayner pioneered the use of improvisations based on ordinary non-dance movements ranging from acrobatics to military marching to sports and games. Some of her better known dances and theatre pieces are Terrain, The Mind is a Miracle Muscle, Continuous Project Altered Daily. This is the story of a woman who, after many a summer dies, the swan, which was commissioned by the Barishnikov Dance Foundation. Twala Tharp's early training included a variety of performing arts including ballet, button twirling and the study of several musical instruments. Her signature technique is similarly eclectic, integrating classical discipline and vocabulary with the avant-garde. Tharp has choreographed for dance, theatre, film, television and video. Her selection of musical composers has been equally broad, ranging from classical masters to jazz and pop superstars. Thar's aesthetics evolved during the highly experimental 1960s. She joined the Paul Taylor Dance Company in 1963, but left two years later to form her own company. She received early accolades for the Fuge, which uses no music but is accompanied by sounds made by the dancers. Two years later, she choreographed Deuce Cube for the Joffrey dance to songs by the Beach Boys. The social and artistic upheavals of the late 1960s and 70s signaled even more radical departures for modern dance. 
Modern dance today is much more sophisticated both in technique and technology than the dance began by its pioneers. Current pioneers in modern dance find a much softer dividing line between modern dance and ballet. In truth, ballet, modern and contemporary dance companies today have come to regard fluency in all genres of dance as important to their work. Today's modern dance has become a fusion of multiple dance genres as demonstrated by choreographers Mark Morris, Ohad Naharin and Shane Wei. Mark Morris is most influenced by George Balanchine and Mars Cunningham. He formed the Mark Morris Dance Group in 1980 and the White Oak Dance Project with Mikhail Barinishkov in 1990. He is known as one of the greatest living modern dance choreographers, a dancer of extraordinary power and an unpredictably imaginative theatre artist. One of his most popular work is The Hard Nut, which is Morris' faithful interpretation of E.T.A. Hoffman's The Nutcracker and The Mouse King. It is set in the 1960s and features sets inspired by graphic comic books and wildly colorful period costumes. The choreography is described as quirky and humorous despite the story's dark themes. Morris's ballet work is included in the repertory of the San Francisco Ballet, American Ballet Theatre, Paris Opera Ballet, Boston Ballet, Pacific Northwest Ballet, Dutch National Ballet, New Zealand Ballet, Houston Ballet and the Royal Ballet. Morris is noted for his sophisticated musicality and has been described as undeviating in his devotion to music. The Washington Post called Mark Morris our Mozart of modern dance. The Los Angeles Times calls him intensely musical, deceptively cerebral, un Insinuatingly sensual and fabulously funky, the company of dancers is reinforced by Morris's use of live musicians in every performance. Ohad Naharin began dancing at age 22 with Batsheva Dance Company, which was founded in 1964 by Martha Graham and Baroness Batsheva de Rothschild. In 1975, Naharin left Israel to study in New York with Martha Graham, Juilliard and the School of American Ballet. He choreographed and presented his first dances in 1980. In 1990, Naharin was appointed the artistic director of Batsheva Dance Company. His movement style is often described as liquid. Naharin's signature style and technique, Gaga, is distinguished by Stunningly flexible limbs and spines, deeply grounded movement, explosive bursts and vitality. Dancers work without a mirror, feeling the movement from within. There are two avenues for this technique, one for dancers who will perform and one for non-dancers who are learning the technique for themselves. In his technique, Naharin uses a use, series of words that signify particular ways to initiate movements and the parts of the body involved in initiating and feeling that movement which establishes a flow throughout the entire body that allows complete fluidity no matter where the movement is initiated. Naharin's works have been commissioned by the Frankfurt Ballet, Opera National, the Paris Grand Theatre de Geneva, Sydney Dance Company, Lyon Opera Ballet, Le Grand Ballets Canadiens, Rambert Dance Company, Compania National de Danza, Cedar Lake Contemporary Ballet, Pittsburgh Ballet Theatre and Hubbard Street Dance Chicago. Shane Wei, founder and artistic director of Shane Wei Dance Com Arts is a choreographer who combines Eastern and Western influences and multiple artistic disciplines to create a bold and visually arresting form of dance theatre. Through choreographed movements that are precise and inventive, he and his dancers perform highly stylized steps and gestures 
inspired by western dance traditions as well as Chinese opera, acrobatics and martial arts. He incorporates vivid colors, striking costume design and imaginative use of space into theatrical works that are kinetic paintings. Wei began his career by performing opera with the human state Xi'an Opera Company. In 1991, he became a founding member dancer and choreographer of the Guangdong Modern Dance Company, the first such company in China. Wei moved to New York City in 1995 and was approached to present his work by the American Dance Festival. His work has subsequently appeared worldwide at prestigious dance festivals and venues and he was commissioned as one of the principal choreographers of the 2008 Beijing Olympics opening ceremonies. Among his most re recent works are Near the Terrace Part 1, Folding, Behind Resonance, Near the Terrace Part 2, Rite of Spring, Connect Transfer, Second Visit to the Empress, Map, Re part 1 and re part 2. For each dance and opera work created with his company, Shen Wei also created the sets, costumes and makeup designs. Wei has received numerous awards. He is a 2007 MacArthur Genius and United States Artist Fellow. He has received a John Seaman Guggenheim Fellowship a New York Foundation for the Arts Fellowship and the American Dance Festival's Ben Sommer Fellowship. We also received the Nijinsky Award for Emerging Choreographer in 2004, Australia's 2005 Helpman Award for Best Ballet or Dance Work and the 2006 Les Etoiles de Ballet Palais the festival in Cannes, France. He has received commissions from the American Dance Festival, Lincoln Center Festival, the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts, New York City Opera and Alvin Ailey Dance Theatre too. The Bill T. Jones Arne Zane Dance Company was formed in 1983 with elements of contact improvisation personal narrative, social commentary, text, pure movement and more. Many works draw on African American history including fondly do we hope, fervently do we pray on US President Abraham Lincoln, John's tackles different topics, still here explores survival in the face of AIDS which claimed Zane's life. Early modern dance defined itself in opposition to ballet. Students were often forbidden from taking ballet classes. However, over the decades, modern dance and ballet began to influence each other. Modern dancers frequently study ballet technique and ballet comp choreographers frequently discard pointy shoes and incorporate characteristic modern dance movement that articulates the torso and works with rather than fights gravity. In some cases, it is hard to categorize a choreographer's work. Sometimes the term modern ballet is used to label those ballet choreographers who are heavily influenced by the style and spirit of modern dance. Both genres have been enriched by borrowing from each other. In addition, major modern dance choreographers like Twyla Tharp, Mark Morris and Trisha Brown frequently create works for ballet and opera companies. In the past, modern dancers like Home and Tamiris choreographed for Broadway Today, modern dance is having a renewed impact on Broadway as choreographers like Twyla Tharp, Moving In, Singing in the Rain, all these are her compositions. Then Grat Fagan, 
his famous composition is the lion king then karol armitage his composition is hair and passing strange and of course bill t jones the spring awakening and fella famous bill t jones they are creating award winning choreography for musicals today many of the ground breaking choreographers and established companies like Martha Graham, Mars Cunningham, Paul Taylor, Bill T. Jones, and R. Nee Zane, Twyla Tharp, Mark Morris, Trisha Brown, Alvin Ailey, they continue to exert their influence. Hundreds of American modern dance choreographers now create work on US and abroad, variously continuing in the footsteps of their mentors or striking out to innovate in ever surprising ways. notable dance makers who are now adding to the american modern dance story include suzanne marshall sara michelson alozo king reni harris ralph lemon beb miller lula ashington john jaspers david ruzov david dorfman daug varon abdel ar salam Wally Cardona, David Parsons, Melissa Fenley, Carol Armitage, Elisa Monte, Annie B. Parsons, Ben Munestri, Joe Good, Neil Greenberg, Margaret Jenkins, Stephen Petronio, and many, many more. American dance. you know american modern dance makers toured the globe from the forms beginning years and in turn met studied with and incorporated ideas from masters of other cultures and traditions in today's global environment multinational interchange has accelerated in reaching the whole world of dance Among the many influences in American dance are Butoh from Japan, the Tanz Theater of German Spina Bausch, classical Indian dance such as Bharatanatyam, modern dance fusions of ragmala music and dance theater, Chinese dance such as in the dance theater of Shen Wei dance arts and capoeira and other South American dance and movement forms.